All right. Double board bomb pot time. So let's go to, is this Bach? Is that how you pronounce your name, sir? Um, I say Boach. 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 Did you say, is this playing out of Boston too? Uh, this is played out at Chasers. Oh, at Chasers. Okay. So Chasers in New Hampshire. I live, by the way, right in, I don't know if, are you from New Hampshire or are you from Massachusetts or what? No, I'm, um, I, well, I go to MIT and I actually met you at the Boston oh, Earlier Meetup game. You're one year. of, you're one of the MIT guys. <laughs> you, yeah, I remember that. You had the whole crew. You weren't that guy that lost that big pot, were you? When we actually, act, we actually played in a meetup game. It's, when we have these right. meetups, we don't really do games, but actually at Boston Billiards last Christmas, we did a little game. It was kind of fun. I mean, we got two tables for a little bit, but, mm -hmm. but one, I don't know if it was you or your buddy lost a big pot. I remember. Uh, it's probably my buddy. I didn't play any big pot against you. Uh, no, it wasn't even against me. It was against somebody else. But okay, I remember you. Okay. I remember you. Okay, so you're an MIT guy. Okay, so double board bomb pot. Right? PLO? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so this is played at uh, Chasers. It's the 510 um, Hold'em PLO mix game. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's 1,000 minimum buy-in, 2,500 max buy-in. So this is the Tuesday game, right? Uh, it's a Wednesday. We went on a Wednesday. Really? Because usually they do this on Tuesday. Right. Uh, I think somehow they had it on Wednesday, too. Okay. Well, you probably know my buddy Josh, the firefighter. Big guy. Blonde hair. You might not know him by his name, but okay. So this is the mixed game. Yep. Yeah. So table um, at this time is six handed. And um, I I pretty much min bought into this game. And by this time I have 1,050 in my stack. Okay. So 1,050. Okay. Yeah. So the table has decided to do a $50 um, PLO double board bomb pot. We do this um, twice every half an hour. Once at the um, dealer change and one more time, like during during the half hour. Yeah, so I played a bunch of double board PLO bomb pots at Hustler before the show and then before the commentary on Friday. And it's interesting how these things run, like because it's all based on anti size, how big the game is. And the funny thing is, is that the more short handed it is, the less money that's in the pot. So sometimes the game plays smaller. So real mm -hmm. aware players will actually suggest upping the ante when you're more short-handed right because if you're playing six-handed there's 300 dead but if you're playing nine-handed there would be 450 dead um we played with a tw we played like in a 2k buy-in with a 20 dollar ante and i was like oh my god this is so fucking small it was just so small like i feel like sometimes i'm glad that at least that they put 50 out there you know sometimes the ante is just too small you know, but yeah, I think uh, 50 might not even be the norm. I think it's just on that day, like the table decided to do a 50 and okay. um, maybe some other time they do 25 or 30. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So there's like 300 in the mo in dead money, right? In the pot. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what are you dealt? Yeah. So I was dealt nine of heart, eight of clubs, four of heart and four of spades. Nine of hearts, eight of clubs, four of hearts, four of spades. Yeah, and I'm in the cutoff. Of, piece of cheese, huh? This, of course, is why um, bomb pots are, make this game better. Bomb pots make any double board game better. I've played this game a lot online as a VPIP game, and I hear at Hollywood Park they play it as a VPIP game. It's still a good game, but as I say, like if you play like PLO8 or Big O, the game is always better if it's a bomb pot game. I mean, and in those high-low games, you don't need to play double board, but because you force people to play hands that they would otherwise not, they could just knit it up if it's V-Pip. Like, you would not play this, right? If you were playing a double board V-Pip, you would not play this hand. But you're in the hand, right? In the cutoff. Right. Okay. All right. So, nine eight four four with hearts. All right. What's the flop? Yeah. So, top flop comes king of heart, queen of heart, and ten of heart. King of hearts, queen of hearts, ten of hearts. Okay. Yeah. And bottom board comes... Eight of heart, five of heart, deuce of spade. Okay, so king of hearts, queen of hearts, ten of hearts. On the, we'll call that on the top, flop one. Flop two is eight, five, deuce with two hearts. So you flop a flush here. You've got a nine high flush. And that looks to be the third nut flush. It looks like the ace and the jack are the first and second nut flush, right? The other mm -hmm. interesting thing here is that there are two hearts on the bottom, which means that you have a flush draw down there. Now, the chances of a heart coming are slim because all these hearts are dead. 
But it also means that there's less of a chance that people actually have a flush too. This is another thing of note. So, I mean, if you are up front here, your hand is certainly not worth a bet. Cutoff is kind of interesting, though. Uh, if it does get checked to you, I don't remember exactly what happens. What happens here? Yeah, it ended up checking all the way around. So it gets checked to you. Yeah, it gets checked to me. And you decide to check. Right. So um, my thought was really just to, like, I don't want to see any board pairs on a turn that would just basically kill my hand. And I just waited, decided to wait for some safe cards. Um, yeah, I mean, there's that. Sure, there's that. But here's the thing about any split pot game here, too, which I think a lot of people can't. They don't when they come from no limit. They can't really wrap their head around it. And especially if they don't even have any experience really in PLO, because I think a lot of people, especially coming from Texas, they find themselves in these double board PLO bomb pot games and they don't even really even play PLO. There is a huge thing of just denying equity and visibility in these games. In any split pot game, and especially in this game, like you just want Queen 10 to fold. Like when we think about no limit, we're like, oh, we want to bet and get called by worse, or we're bluffing, right? There's an, a whole, I mean, there's some equity protection, right? And hold them. And obviously there's some range betting, but there's way more equity protection in a game like this, meaning you want to bet to take the pot down a lot. Uh, and that happens a lot in big O as well. Single board big O, if anyone just plays big O, you have very little visibility sometimes if you allow a, free, a card to come off where you just, it's it, almost impossible to know where you're at. And a lot of times you just want to bet to win the pot, almost like a tournament. So there is a case for that a little bit. Um, but I can sort of see what you're talking about. Also too, you might want to see what a guy does from up front. I mean, most people will play their hands straight up in these games, though. Like, I would be way more apt to see someone just come out and bet the nut flush to the point where I actually think the nut flush might not be represented all that much here. Just because now someone might have the jack high flush, though. So you might want to wait and kind of see. You know, are you with me? Yeah. Uh, Bo what was your name again? Bach? Boach. Boach. Bo Boach. Excuse me. Boach. Okay. So it gets checked through. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So turn, top board comes the jack of spade, and bottom board comes the ace of heart. Wow. Okay. So top board's the jack of spades. So it's king, queen, ten, all hearts, turns the jack of spades. And the bottom board is eight, five, deuce, two hearts, turns the ace of hearts. So now you now have the second nuts. But what's interesting here is that if someone has a jack high flush, it is now obviously the nuts right now on both boards, right? If they mm -hmm. have the jack high flush, and it is a hand that might be checked from up front, Boach, if you were right. thinking about that, you know? So if somebody comes out swinging here from up front, they could have the jack high flush, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what do we got? What, what yeah, happens so now? So the action goes small blind. The first actor, the first um, player to act bets pot for three hundred. Oh, interesting. Then, small blind bets three hundred. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. The next player folds. Um, the low jack calls the three hundred, and then next player folds. I call three hundred and button folds. Okay. So small blind bets three hundred. And again, the small blinds certainly could have the jack high flush here. What's interesting about this hand when I took this as an email is that normally in a double board game, it's a split pot game, and split pot concepts come into play, right? This hand's kind of unique though, because when you ever get two of the same suit in flushes, it's kind of just a one-way game. Right, Bosch? Because anybody right. who's going to have the highest heart flush is going to win both sides, unless the board pairs, right? So, I mean, mm -hmm. ju I'm just assuming. So, this is one of these unique ones where the nuts is actually going to be the same. And that only really happens if there is the same flush on both boards, which is pretty fucking rare, right? I mean, there's only right. so many hearts in the hand. So, I think it's pretty obvious that the low jack doesn't have the jack high flush. I think that the low jack probably doesn't call. I mean, you're getting pot odds here. So, I mean, it goes pot, 300 call. So, uh, six, looks like it's 900, 300 for you to call, right? Right. All right. So, you make the call 
And uh, I, I'm fine with that. Let's see what this guy does and see, obviously, what the board. So it looks like the pot's 1200 now, right? And you've got like mm -hmm. 650 yeah. left, something like that. I got uh, 700. 700 left. Okay. All right. So let us so, go to the rivers. River top board comes five of diamond, and bottom card is three of club. So two complete bricks. Five of diamonds. And what you said? Five of clubs? Uh, three of clubs. Three of clubs. Okay. To total, total bricks. I'm just going to make sure that people can see this here. There we go. I got the whole thing up now. Um, so, again, the final board is king, queen, ten, jack. King, queen, ten, all hearts, turns jack of spades, rivers of five, no board pair. And then on the bottom, it's eight, five, deuce, two hearts. Turn is the ace of hearts. River is a three of clubs. No board pair. Hero has the second nuts on both boards, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So it ended up going uh, small blind, um, positive for 1,200. And Interesting. Then... And then the guy in between folds, I assume? Yeah, the guy in between folds, and that puts me into the tank. Well, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. I always I already talked about the fact that this is a very, very unique hand because this plays like a one way hand, right? If he has the jack of if he has the jack high flush, you're gonna lose both. You're not calling a chop. But if he's bluffing, right, uh you're gonna win mm -hmm. both. And I think it's kinda obvious to me that even a non experienced player here even like in this game, and I don't think there's a whole lot of experienced double board players at chasers. I think that an, even in a, a non-experienced player can figure out that the Jack of hearts is a key blocker, right? Cause there's King queen, 10, all hearts out there. And the Ace of hearts is on the second turn. Very obvious to see that the Jack of hearts is a key card here. Key right. card, just absolute key. And looking at the board also too, the next nut is the nine, which is, of course, what you have, right? So, you know, you're getting two to one here. If he's bluffing, and I can't imagine because you have the second that anybody would go in for like three value for less here. I mean, it would be stupid. I, and, I, and, I, and I wonder here too, like this type of sizing is kind of weird to me if someone actually had the jack high flush because it got checked through. It got checked through on the flop here. So it's very easy for someone with a naked jack of hearts, I think, to kind of put you in a spot or put you guys in a spot here when you didn't bet the flop um, because it just gets checked through in position. So again, even if you're not dealing with a whole lot of like advanced players here, I think I find a call here for those reasons. You check back the flop. I think you have to call with some something here. And I think it's very, very obvious that somebody actually might bluff here with the jack of hearts. So... I think I find a call. Not a great spot to be in. Very interesting hand because of the fact that it's one way. But I think because you check back the flop and it's it should be obvious to any idiot that the Jack of Hearts is key here. I think, I think I find a call. So what ended up happening? Yeah, actually, I was getting I was getting better than um, two to one because I only have seven hundred behind. So oh, I that's right. Oh, that. Oh, off. that also. Oh, yeah. So. He's betting 12 and 12. So, I mean, really, it's 7 into 12. Then then it's 700 for 19, right? 700 for 19, right? right? Oh, then, I mean, you're getting even better pot odds here, right? You're getting even mm -hmm. better pot odds here. So, I think I definitely call. I forgot about the fact that you only had 700. What did you do? Yeah, so I ended up actually tanking for like two, three minutes, just agonizing, and I ended up folding it. Oh, uh, botch. Botch. Nate Schmidt in the live chat says, Bart, if you hold the Jack of Hearts, do you make this bluff? I think I would, although I will say, Nate, that it's interesting because this guy only has 700 here. So, and who knows if that, if his opponent recognized, did, did the other guy have 1200, I assume? The other guy, the low Jack? Yeah, 1200? the other guy was pretty deep. I mean, it's interesting because like, he's bluffing into two people. But it's a very, very unique type of scenario here, I, I, I will have to say. Um, and then there's so many hearts out there 
that it's just so less likely. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six hearts on board. If we have the sole jack of hearts, we have seven hearts accounted for out of the 13. The chances that someone has a flush isn't even all that high, right? Mm -hmm. um, because there's so many dead. So I actually think that I would bluff Nate. And that's why I think I would call getting, you know, two and a half to one. Did you ever find out what he had? Um, so after the hand, they asked me what I have. And I said, like, uh, nine high flush. And they are, they are all, like, really surprised that I folded that. Uh -huh. um, the small blind ended up telling me that he has a seven high flush. The small blind said that he had the seven high flush? Right. And he potted for 1,200? Mm -hmm. And I mean, um, that's a little bit crazy. I mean, and I actually... I believed him because my fr um the low jack was actually my friend um and he later told me that he has the naked jack of heart blocker so if small blind checked river wow. he was gonna ship it as a bluff so he did not have the jack of hearts because your your buddy said that he had the jack of hearts blocker right. right right I mean again for all those reasons I call I'm just trying to think I mean I I actually slipped that one in I said if he's and, and if he's ever overvaluing something just follow with me here the seven of hearts would be the second well excuse me so let's assume that we don't think anyone has a jack high flush because of the turn action right let's th think that the jack high flush jams turn a lot so mm -hmm. the king the queen the 10 the ace are out there we dismiss the jack the eight of hearts is out there so if you have the seven high heart flush then you're only losing to the nine you can almost look at it like the second nuts. If you assume that someone's going to jam a jack, right, on the turn, it still seems very, very large, though. Like, he's not trying to bluff you off the nine high flush, right? Right. You know what I mean? So it's kind, mm -hmm. it's weird. But sometimes you get into these spots where people don't even know what they're doing. I assume he's going for value here? Right. I think I agree. He was just going for value with his flush flush. I mean... But what is he going to get called here by? I mean, he's got, there's a lot of hearts out there. There's a lot of hearts. But again, I think definitely getting two and a half to one, I, I make the call. Thanks for the, thanks for, thanks for, uh, thanks for the call, Botch. Yeah. Thanks, Bart. All right.